Hello there, this is John from MyBrainOnGames.com and I'm here today to play some Project Gotham Racing 4 for the Xbox 360. Uh, I was playing Lost Odyssey for the past month or so and about halfway through it I fired up Project Gotham Racing 4. I picked it up from GameStop. I think they had it on deep discount. It was probably just a loose disc for like two dollars a buck, something like that. And I think a little bit later I found a complete copy of it and went ahead and just bought that as well. Got a complete copy of PGR4. Uh, I played PGR3 for a fair amount whenever I first got the Xbox 360. And I liked it. And I think Bizarre Creations, the studio that developed it, they got a, a good track record with racing games. Uh, dating back to at least Metropolis Street Race on the Dreamcast. I haven't played that. I've been meaning to pick it up at some point for the Dreamcast. But... Uh, whenever I'm at used game stores, there's usually other stuff that pops up. But it's always kind of in the back of my mind to like to pick that up. Um, like I said, started this up about halfway through playing Lost Odyssey. I beat that now. So I figured, well, let me go ahead and clean this up. Just work my way all the way through the uh, career mode, or at least get up to the first place, or get ranked first in the world in the uh, Gotham career mode. I think right now I'm ranked like 42nd. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and do this event and see what happens. This is the Jaguar Precision Challenge. Show off your precision driving skills in this special event. And if you're up to scratch, unlock the exclusive Jaguar D-Type to use in your next race. And this is an invitational and just gives a little uh, background on what invitationals are. So, this is a cone attack. Hit the target number of cones to succeed. And that's one of the things, as I've been playing PGR4, uh, I kind of maybe forgot about or maybe didn't really think about. This has got a lot of cool uh, events besides just normal races. And it's got a lot of cool uh, kind of one-off events too, like racing around the Nürburgring in snow. Uh, I was really surprised at how much fun that was. It was very, very challenging. I don't think I did very well. I, was, I did well enough to succeed. But there's lots of cool one-off events throughout this that kind of set it apart from other racing games. You know, this is something... That kind of skewed... Uh, you know, it didn't really skew one way or the other between arcade-style racing games and racing sim-style racing games. And Jeeves, my cat, just jumped up on the table, so if there's any additional or odd noises, that's him. He heard me talking and came walking. Uh, but this game, or this series, it always seemed kind of like a cross between the simulation-style racing games akin to, like, Forza or Gran Turismo and more arcade-style racing games, a la Need for Speed or uh, Ridge Racer. But it really struck a very good balance, I've always thought. Okay, and it looks like I got my target. Hey, and I got an achievement in the process, Weather Master. I think that's for winning a, winning a race in every uh, weather type. Which it looks like that is correct. That is when races in rain, fog, and snow. And I just dropped my cat because he was clawing all over me. I dropped my controller. Let's get that plugged back in. Okay. Alright, finish invitational. Looks like I think because I won, I'm going to get this Jaguar D type. You've unlocked the D-type. Well done, sure enough. Well, that was a quick little event. Why don't we try and do one more? See see what's up next. Uh, we've got the Racing Sun series, and I've got access to a few more. I think whenever you start this game, you begin at the 100th rank, uh, ranked 100 in the world. And up at the top in the center, you can see at this point, I'm ranked 41st. And I've got access to a few different races, and if I was ranked even higher, I could do the Macau Masters Championship but I'm not quite that good yet. So we'll go ahead and do the Rising Sun series. And let's see, this is gonna be Class B cars, Class B. We've got the Supercar, got the Jaguar, an Ultima, Ducati motorbike. Uh, and that was one of the cool things with PGR4. This was the first game in the series to introduce uh, motorcycles. We're gonna go ahead and stick with the Stick with the racers, race cars though. Let's we'll choose this Ultima. Why don't we do black? That black looked pretty slick. Which this was the last Project Gotham racing game. Now this is time versus kudos. Finish the course fastest to win. Stop the clock by earning kudos. I'm not that. I've done these a couple of times. I'm not that good. 
But yeah, this was the last Project Gotham Racing game. I think after this, they made Blur. I want to say they got bought out by Activision, they made Blur, and then Activision promptly shut them down. Which is kind of a shame. They had a good run. I want to say they were originally founded in the mid-90s, and they'd worked on an F1 game or two for Sony, and I think their first real big, real big breakout, at least... Uh, 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 uh. at least internationally was Metropolis Street Racer and then with the Xbox launch they basically made the spiritual successor to that in the Project Gotham Racing series Geometry Wars 2 that's another big thing that they put out so I you know, I'd say I'm probably about halfway done with this career mode, maybe a little more. I think if I do start at one, if I did start at 100 and I'm working my way to first, I'm ranked 41st right now. That'd put me a little over halfway. Uh, I've been switching the camera angles that I've been uh, racing with, and you know, usually I I race with this third person camera angle. And that's just I think I'm used to playing. Uh, I think the first racing games I played were like Top Gear on the SNES. And that was its camera angle, so I was just accustomed to that from, from my youth. But one of the camera angles I really enjoyed in this game... Whoa, I did awful. Jeez. I'm going to have to step it up in these next races to, to win. But one of the camera angles I'm really digging in PGR4 is the cockpit view. I've never liked the cockpit view in games. But this one, I'm really digging with some cars, that is. When we get into this next race, we'll give it a shot in this Ultima and see how I like it. Uh, we got Cone Sprint. Go through the cone gates the fastest with the fastest time, in the fastest time, to win. Don't miss a gate or blah, blah, blah. I'm sure time will be added. This car ought to be pretty good for this. It's got great handling. They said no drift skills, which is fine. Fine for me, fine for this event. Looks like I got a little squirrely there. Not enough to earn kudos. Maybe one of the things that really does the cockpit view for me this in this game is the the sound, the audio quality of the cars is just so good. And as I'm sitting here, you know, I'm not I'm not putting the pedal to the metal here. I'm not going full out. Ugh, hits and cones. Uh, but man, whenever I just rev up and hear it going, it sounds so good. It sounds so realistic. Especially in a car, you know, as powerful as this one. Really get up at it now. Oh man. It Starting to take it a little too fast. But yeah, this is another kind of fun event that you don't really see in other... Or maybe not in other racing games, but maybe you just don't see that often. Not that I play a lot of racing games and be the person who would know. Okay, well, I'm ranked first so far on the first lap, so if I can just maintain, I should win this event. Yeah, I do like the cockpit view for this car. Kind of don't have the 
don't have anything obstructing my view that much. I want to say it was like with the Tesla Roadster. No, with the TVR. The steering wheel was just sticking straight up in front of my viewpoint. Like, I don't know if that cockpit just, or the, the bucket seats in that car just sit so low where you really got to look up and over the steering wheel. Or if there was just a small person driving, I don't know. Uh, looks like I've fallen to second. I think I can get back into first. Getting a little squirrely there. Alright. Finishes in sight. Alright, came out on top. And after the after you won, you just don't care. Computer drivers just busting through them all. Okay, Mr. Jeeves. We know Mr. Jeeves is in here. Or he was in the room with me. He's in the house. A uh, little pup. Alright, a pit bull. Pit bull Mick, she's in the house too. It's like they're playing with each other, kind of going at it. We started bringing little pup in not too long ago. Maybe last month. Uh, breakthrough. Get through the most checkpoints to win before time runs out. Add time to the clock by passing checkpoints. Okay. But yeah, I brought Little Pup in, probably starting about a month ago, two months ago. And at first, the cat, Mr. G, just could not stand the dog. would just get really scared, run and go jump on top of the fridge, get out of town. Now they're actually getting along pretty well. Jeeves is definitely the dominant one, though. And I can see that. We take Little Pup to the dog park last year during the summer. starting to get weather to take her again. And she'd always like being submissive. She liked being the one getting chased not being the chaser. She would always just kind of walk around waiting for other dogs, kind of tell her what to do. Oh. Just about slid into the wall. Great corner, all right. Earning some kudos. Oof. One thing about the PGR series, they've never really uh, been, they've never really had races set on specific race tracks. It seems like they always just choose cities, you know, New York City, St. Petersburg, Tokyo, and they kind of make their race tracks through the city streets, kind of, you know, as you can see, cordoning off the route. It's always kind of set it apart from other games, I think, too. Other racing games, everything is kind of always set in the city. Okay. I'm bringing up... Oh, gosh. That's awful. I'm bringing up the rear here, and... I'm probably gonna... I'm probably gonna make a comeback. That's what I was gonna say. I'm probably gonna make a comeback. I got this. myself up to sixth. There we go. Alright, I'm up in second now. Just gotta get one more checkpoint and I... Oh! 
One more checkpoint. I would have won it. I was right there. Oh, I did get it. Okay. Oh, I tied for first. I didn't. I didn't take first unto myself. I tied for first. But yeah, kudos points. Uh, that's one another thing. You know, I keep mentioning all these things that have set this series apart from other racing games. Uh, the kudos points. You know, kind of driving stylishly gets you points. Basically, in this game, the currency that you use to buy more cars, buy more tracks, or various upgrades, uh, various uh, decorative upgrades. You know, I'm not really showing it off here in this class. Seems like you know this car is more made for speed and precise cornering rather than something like drifting. Uh, time to run, finish the court, and the fastest time to win. But you know, even in that, even without doing that stuff, I'm still earning kudos points for you know whenever I make a really good corner, whenever I come at it properly. Uh, I think this game was kind of a little more lenient with those kudos points. I think it this was the game that where they kind of implemented that implemented that, you know, okay, we're going to start giving you kudos points, not just for driving, you know, cool, not just going to be sitting here drifting or doing burnouts or whatnot, but for actually uh, driving skills. Yeah, see, so there's a power slide, got a little bit of points for it. Start doing plenty of power slides, I guess. But yeah, it is very cool kind of driving through these cities at night, seeing the skyscrapers or seeing all these, you know, residential living. Oof, oof. I guess that's my cue to focus more on the track instead of the skyline, huh? Jeez, ah, oh, shit. Okay, we got this corkscrew coming up. listening to cars from the cockpit. Just kind of being able to look around in them, see the detail. Oh, I got up on two wheels. I think that's the first time I've ever gotten uh, kudos points for that. Lost Odyssey. I was surprised by how much I got into that and really enjoyed it. Whenever I first started playing it, it seemed... Uh, it seemed like a... It's kind of a... not. I wouldn't say a lazy JRPG, 
but it definitely wasn't a it didn't seem like a forward thinking one you know with that genre so many games that come out of Japan just ate you know the game basically the formula that was really really perfected on the SNES perfected on the SNES and the PlayStation you know I wouldn't chagrin anyone whenever they play those games say ah this is just like you know, this is the same thing I've been playing for 30, 20, 15, 10, however many years. I really like that style of game, so I can get into it. This one, at first, it kind of had me worried just because it did seem so so tied to simple battle system, kind of mechanics of the past, but it really opened up. I really enjoyed the story, I think, most of, most of all. I think that's what really kept me engrossed and kept me wanting to slog through maybe a kind of a kind of a slow start perhaps gameplay wise at least and all right got that and I got it within the time to win but the thing that really killed it for me with the gameplay you know battle system itself was pretty simple uh, had some elements had some elemental affinity so we had that strengths and weaknesses Kind of add a little bit of depth to it, but real basic depth, depth that you'd find in most any other JRPG. The thing that really killed it for me, the skill system. Uh, accessories would uh, grant skills. You'd have to level up, basically get the requisite amount of experience on the accessory. And the Immortal, it's like I got third overall. I'll, I'll take it. I did real poorly that first time. Oh my gosh. But the skills... Uh, would be granted to the more and there was like 170 skills in the game and there's kind of two types of characters i moved up moved up a spot or two up to 40 uh, there were mortals and immortals uh the mortals uh couldn't the mortals could learn skills but they could only learn skills they they received from leveling up they couldn't learn skills from uh equipment the immortals in turn though they could learn skills only through equipment or through linking up skills that the immortals knew. So there was a lot of skills to learn, a lot of different variety. Kind of remind me a little bit of Final Fantasy V, being able to customize your character with whatever skills you wanted. And it was just really expansive. And I just, it just clicked for me. It was just something with like the OCD tendencies I tend to have or kind of the Pokemon collect them all. I wanted to get them all. And I got them all. It helps that there are achievements tied to it, but it's a damn fine game, Lost Odyssey. Anyways, I think that's all I'll do uh, for Project Gotham Racing 4 at the moment. Uh, like I said, uh, I like this. I really enjoy it. I started up in the middle, midst of uh, Lost Odyssey, and now that I've beaten that, I want to get back to this and kind of see this through to the end. At the very least, to get some more achievements. At least try and get more than 50% in this game. I think, I can, I think I'll get a lot. I won't be able to get them all. It's, this game is no longer online whenever... Uh, I don't know if it was whenever Bizarre Creations was sold to Activision or whenever they shut down. Uh, they removed all of the DLC for this game. And I'll want to say the servers for this game are shut down too, but that may be incorrectly. Or that may be an incorrect statement. Microsoft may be operating these servers still. I haven't gone online to check. I don't have Xbox Live Gold. And I just tend not to play a lot of games online. I like more single player stuff. But anyways, uh, this was John from MyBrownGames.com. Uh, Hope you uh, join me next time whenever I play more of Project Gotham Racing 4. In the meantime, you can check me out on mybrainandgames.com. You can check me out here at YouTube. I think I'm like a John the Gamer 0077, something stupid like that. And on Twitter, I'm John Engelman, E-N-G-E-L-M-A-N. Uh, so thanks for watching. Bye-bye.